Hi everyone and welcome to another video from DisperiPair.com. If the heating in your car isn't working properly, you might have a bad heater core. In this video you'll see what are some of the most common symptoms and watching this may perhaps help you determine if the heater core is the problem. So stay tuned. DisperiPair.com be sure to visit us at our website despairrepair.com where you can find more useful car and driving tips. For a brief explanation, the heater core is in charge of heating up the passenger cabin. It's essentially a small radiator connected to the rest of the coolant system. Hot coolant goes through the heater core producing hot air which the ventilator then blows into the ventilation system. This is how the cabin warms up. The usual location of the heater core is deep under the dashboard, in line with the central console. It's usually inside the plastic housing of the ventilation system, so you can take a glimpse at it when changing the cabin filter. If you want to see how to change the cabin filter, click on the link to watch our video on that topic. Although this example is shown on a Skoda, the basic principle and location is almost the same on all cars, except the electric ones. The first and most obvious bad heater core symptom is a constant low level of coolant. If you have to add coolant frequently, first check for leaks under the car or around the engine or engine bay. If everything is okay and dry, the heater core is the next checkpoint. If there is a constant loss of coolant, you might have a leaking heater core. The heater core is an integrated connected part of the coolant system, meaning that the same coolant going through the system goes through the heater core. So if it's leaking, the coolant level will go down. The usual scenario is that the leak will be barely noticeable at the beginning of the problem and you'll have to add coolant only once a month for instance. But as it gets worse, you'll have to add coolant every couple of days. This is the most noticeable bad heater core symptom. Since the heater core is located inside the passenger cabin, the usual scenario is that the coolant drips onto the carpets, floor insulation and eventually penetrates to the floor panels. If it goes unnoticed, which is a common case, everything will get saturated with coolant. The best way to notice this on time is when you clean the interior of your car. Simply flip over the floor mats and if you see that they're wet, although it's dry outside and there's no rain, then the heater core is probably the cause. Besides this, if you rub the carpet underneath and get a greasy, sweet smelling like film on your fingers, you'll know for certain that you have a leaking heater core. Noticing this symptom on time is very important. When the carpets and insulation get saturated with coolant, the only solution is to dismantle parts of the interior and get everything that's wet outside. With most cars, this is a painstaking and time-consuming job involving things like taking off trimming, various easy-to-break clips, taking out the car seats, and so on. Added to that, you have to thoroughly clean and dry up everything before returning. Opposed to this, if you notice these bad heater core symptoms on time, a simple dry cloth and a better vacuum cleaner can perhaps solve the problem. It's already been mentioned that the heater core is in charge of cabin heating. So if you sense that the cabin heating is weaker than usual or in worst cases non-existent, then you might certainly have a heater core problem. At first you'll barely notice it, but as the problem progresses, the heating will become weaker and weaker and in the end will stop working completely. You'll hear the cabin ventilator blowing, but only cold air will come out. This symptom appears in the later stages of the problem. So even if you don't notice the wet carpets or a low coolant level, you'll certainly notice the cold temperature inside the passenger cabin. The heater core starts producing heat only when the engine and coolant start warming up. Most drivers know this and don't expect the heating to work until the engine gains some temperature. When everything is okay and the engine starts heating up, you can feel warm air coming out of the vents. 
but if you feel no hot air is coming out of the vents, even when the temperature gauge is showing the normal engine temperature, then you may have a heater core problem. Coolant has a specific sweet smell. If you never smelled coolant, just take off the cap of the coolant bottle when the engine is cold, smell it and you'll know what I mean. Once coolant starts leaking into the passenger cabin, the smell will be always present. Even when the engine is cold and when you get in the car, you'll probably sense it right away because it may be already in the carpets. When the engine heats up, the smell will be even more noticeable. The reason is that the coolant is starting to evaporate into the cabin. When the heater core is punctured and leaking, one of the most common symptoms is a greasy and foggy film forming on the lower part of the windshield near the ventilation openings. Once the engine starts heating up, the coolant will evaporate through the puncture or damaged spot on the heater core and the vapor usually goes into the ventilation system. If the ventilation is pointed towards the windshield, which it mostly is during the winter, coolant vapor will start to form a thin and greasy film or fog. At first, while the leak is minor, it will be hard to notice. Best way to spot the problem on time is to take a cloth and try to clean it. If it's coolant, it will leave smears as well as a greasy stain on the cloth. If you smell the cloth, you'll sense a weak smell of coolant. In the later phase, the foggy film will be present all the time. The moment you start the car, it will appear. By this time, you must take action to solve the problem, otherwise you may end up with a very unpleasant scene. In the final phase of the problem, a thick mist of vaporized coolant may suddenly start pouring into the passenger cabin accompanied by a strong smell of hot coolant. In a matter of minutes, driving will become pretty much impossible, you'll have to pull over, turn the engine off and get out of the car as soon as possible. Another telltale sign of a bad heater core is a foggy passenger cabin whenever you leave the car for a couple of hours. Once you stop the car, turn off the engine and the ventilation system stops working, the coolant starts to evaporate which causes a foggy cabin. A condensation effect happens. Have in mind that this can be caused by other things, like water leaks into the passenger cabin. So if this is the only symptom, make a check for other possible problems. But if it's accompanied by the sweet smell of coolant, it's probably a bad heater core. Besides leaking, a clogged heater core will also cause trouble. Over time, the heater core can get clogged for various reasons, like using tap water instead of coolant, the buildup of filth inside the system, and else. When the heater core clogs up, it causes an increase of coolant pressure inside the system. If the problem is intended to, it can cause engine overheating, coolant hose cracking, or else. This is one of the bad heater core symptoms that is recognizable by a mild engine overheating as well as a constant abnormal high pressure inside the coolant bottle. At the later stages of the problem, you might hear a slight hissing sound from the coolant bottle just after turning off the engine, especially after some longer driving. If there's a constant loss of coolant and it goes unnoticed, it can eventually lead to engine overheating. Overheating will happen in the final phase of the problem, and if you pay attention, it will never get to this. In most cases, a bad heater core will start with a minor leak that can last for weeks if not months. But if neglected, the leak may suddenly turn into a coolant flood. But again, before this, you'll probably notice the smell of coolant, higher reading on the temperature gauge, coolant vapors or the wet carpets. So, plenty of time to react and notice bad heater core symptoms. Try never to get to this phase as overheating has serious consequences to the engine. In more radical cases, it can cause engine damage. You can drive with a bad heater core provided that you add coolant and that the leak isn't too big. If possible, the best way to drive with a leaking heater core is to turn off the cabin heating completely. This way you separate the heater core from the rest of the coolant system and thus stop or reduce the leaking. This isn't of course a problem during the spring or summer season, but in the winter season this method is pretty much useless since the cabin is cold and it fogs up real quick. After a short time, 
the car will be pretty much undrivable. The other option is, if the leak isn't too big, is to pour coolant and let it leak around until you drive to safety and find help. The main point of both ways is to save the engine from overheating. Although all of this may seem complicated, pinpointing a bad heater core problem in a real life situation is a matter of minutes. It usually looks something like this. If you make regular checkups on your car, you'll notice a constant loss of coolant. You then check under the hood and if everything is okay, checking the car mats and carpets is the next step. If they're moist or wet, you've located the problem. Another sequence of events is a constant smell of coolant in the passenger cabin accompanied by mild engine overheating. Then you check the coolant level, after that the car mats and carpets. So in a matter of minutes you'll know what the problem is. For the end, solve the problem as soon as you notice any of these bad heater core symptoms. Although this problem shows itself gradually and can be hard to spot on time, some caution and extra vigilance will help you before it's too late. Neglecting the problem will lead to loss of cabin heating or even worse, engine damage through overheating. So that's it for this time, I hope the video helps to solve your problem, please like and subscribe, it's a huge help for what we're doing. Thanks for your time and thanks for watching.